Good morning, David Stewart. I have the privilege of being the pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And on this Wednesday evening, I'd like to invite you next Wednesday to join me at 10 a.m. for a Bible study I'll be doing. It's traditionally been a group that catered mostly to women, but we want people uh, all ages, shapes, sizes. We'd love to have you in the fellowship hall at 10 a.m. We'll be talking about the prophets and going more in depth than what we're doing here on Sunday morning. We'd love to have you come be a part of that. Just like we're grateful to have you watching us in worship this morning and participating with us. We'd love for you to participate fully by liking, commenting, or sharing the service that is going on. And if you get a chance, uh, we would love to know who you are and to make connections uh, in order to be able to, to fully connect with you and enable you to be a part uh, of this worship experience and to follow up and help you to become a part of our community of faith as we share together and grow together in our faith in Jesus. We are also grateful for those who are joining us online and who have viewed the service throughout the week. Folks, we get a whole lot of uh, feedback from people who uh, have moved away, who are able to join us, and from those who are unable to be here for one reason or another. And we are grateful for all the different ways you choose to join us in worship. If you will, if you're in person, if you'll fill out the Connect card that is in your bulletin and be prepared to place it in the offering plate a little later in the service. And then if you're online, we would love it if you would like, comment, and share, and uh, be able to uh, respond in some way or another, let us know that you are there. We are looking forward in a week and a half uh, on the 30th of uh, this month to have Community Outreach Day in our parking lot, uh, what's known as the Gabler parking lot over here. Uh, there are sign-up sheets in the back, or you can, if you're online, send us a, a Facebook uh, request or something via email to the church office. We're going to need folks at multiple times throughout the day. If you can be there for the whole day, we'd love it. If you can come for a short period, uh, we'll, we'll take it. Uh, in the morning, we're going to need people who like to get up and be here early. 
uh, to be able to help the vendors get set up from like 8 to 10. We're going to need people from about 9.30 on to uh, be here with our guests who are here to make them feel welcome, to help them uh, find their way around. And then we're going to need folks uh, uh, after 2 o'clock to help put everything back together. So uh, we are going to be here that day. We'll have uh, several hundred guests from our community and 100 or so vendors from our community here uh, as we try to help people connect with resources that they need. And we're going to give some stuff away. So uh, we invite you to be a part, and you can contact Brenda Allen for more details. We invite you now, if uh, you are able, to listen to the choir as they call us to worship. Good morning, I'm Roseanne Stannard, your liturgist this morning. Will you please stand for the call to worship? The Lord calls us to go into the world. We, we will, will go. go. God commands us speak as God commands. We, we will speak. speak. God assures us, do not be afraid. We, we trust, trust that, that God, God will deliver us. us. Our hymn of praise is number 371. I stand amazed in the presence. And as you see in your bulletin, we'll be doing verses 1, 4, and 5. As you sing, think about how amazing it would be, how amazing it is today to stand in the presence of the Lord, for he is here.
Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. You'll find on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. who are in our hearts and minds today as we gather for worship. One of those is the Traxel family, Bill having been a very important part of the choir for many, many years. In visiting with Mary, she is looking at October 3rd for services. There are details that still need to be confirmed. We'll get the information to all of you as soon as we can. And I know she is looking forward and hoping that the choir can be a part and that we can honor Bill, who was very much a part of the music program here with many uh, of his uh, favorite pieces of music. So we're excited and hopeful that we can be a part of making that a worship experience for the family as they go through this time uh, of grief and also celebration of life. So we'll get the details to you as soon as we can. So we gather today, we continue in a time of prayer where we'll offer a few moments of silent prayer. I'll pray for us and then invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let us go to our God in this time of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, as we come before you today, we, we come as your people. It is you who has created us and you have called us. Some of us have always been a part of your family and others who are new. 
We are all here because of your love and because that spark that you put inside of us. We pray today as we gather in this space that we would hear again your words. Whether they're words that come to us as blinding lights and thundering crashes of thunder. Are they calm as the still, small voice, the nudge of your Holy Spirit? Lord, help us to hear your calling in our lives. To claim the gifts that you have given us. And to use those gifts to make a difference in this world. As we love others as Jesus has loved us. As we pray his prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite our ushers to come forward and receive the morning tithes and offerings as we hear from our choir.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the young prophet, chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. These are the, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I appreciate all of the folks who serve in different ways in our worship services. I've had some of our young people who say they just want to curl up on Roseanne's lap and let her read all day as uh, she reads. I uh, just want to lift up that one of the great things we have going that is a little out of sight and out of mind, but uh, a blessing nonetheless. If you have the opportunity on a Wednesday night we have a lot of children. Uh, Trish has a great children's ministry going and has a lot of ages and sizes and could use an extra set of hands. So if uh, you're looking for something to do on Wednesday night, it is a joy. And uh, some of those kids would love to have somebody who would just read to them, be with them, uh, hang out with them. It's a good thing. So... Back when I was getting ready to make choices about college, Central Methodist was in the midst of starting a new program and they were getting a bunch of us together who they thought might have gifts and graces for going on into ministry and we were going to be these new scholars that they were bringing to campus. And so in the spring of my senior year in high school, I came to the campus for the first time in a long time. I had grown up going there as a, um, a youth, but uh, it had been a while. And, and there met a lot of families who were there, uh, other persons my age and their parents who were going around the campus and being toured, and we were getting the sales pitch about how much they would do for us if we would just come. And there I met for the first time a really big couple who were older, but were the good German people that many of you know who were just big boned and tall and large and looked like you didn't want to run into them, but were wonderful and loving. And they had a little guy with them who you would have thought was a junior hire instead of somebody ready for college, but who looked and dressed just like much older parents. And even though the size was different, there wasn't any doubt who he'd been raised by. Well, John and I both ended up being scholars and ended up being there on campus together, and he's still one of my good friends and he is serving as a pastor in the North St. Louis area. And sometime during our freshman year when we were in one of those late night sessions where you share things that you don't share otherwise, he let us know that he had been adopted. But these were the only parents he knew. This was mom and dad. This was all he'd ever known. Made sense. And after... His parents had passed away. He wanted to know if it would be possible to find his birth parents, to find out from where he came. It turned out he could find his birth mom, and once they were 
united. It was a wonderful moment in his life, and you also found out why he was the size he was. And it was really helpful to him to know some of the health concerns and DNA that had been passed down, but to also have that emotional connection and support that he still has. We want to know whose we are. And, and somewhere along the line, God put within us this divine spark that we talk about, this light of Jesus. And for some, you may have known it all of your life, and for others of it, we come to it a little later. But when we become a Jesus follower, all of us are responding to that spark within us, and we get adopted into the family. We become a part of this family of God. And, and there's something that happens that changes then. And folks, I want to be real clear over the next several months, I'm going to be using two words very particularly. You hear me all the time talk about religion, talking about that set of rules and laws and the sort of what we see in the Pharisees where you, you live a certain way and you have a certain look on the outside and a whole lot of people come to church and are a part of church and, and yet they're missing Jesus in their life. And then there are the people who are on a spiritual journey. And they may not look like us, and they may not act like us, and they may not have the right words and figure it all out. But these are the folks who are searching for that divine inner light. Who are searching for purpose and meaning in life and their calling and, and, and trying to find out who this God is and what God has called them to do and made them to be. And Jeremiah is letting us know in these first couple of verses that Roseanne read today that he was making that shift in that transition. He was raised in church like many of us. He was a, a priest who was raised within that priestly lineage. He knew all of the right words and all of the rules. But he was also letting us know that the word of God came to him. Even before I was born and before I knew that God had set me aside and anointed me to be a prophet. Folks, we talk about that as a calling. Now, as United Methodist pastor, there was a point in my life where I got so tired of telling my call story. It was like, let me just press the recording. You can hear it again. And you all probably say, yeah, yeah, we've heard it. We got it. And I'm about to enter that season again where in the fall and in the spring I get papers from all of the people who feel that they are called into ministry and we're going to interview them and we're going to make them tell their call story over and over. But we want to know that they're called. That they don't just have the form of religion, that they're not just doing this because they do this. But they're really called deep down by God and they can't do anything else but respond to that call. And folks, here's the secret you need to hear this morning. Each and every one of you who gather on this September and are not in all of the other places you can be are probably some of those folks who are called as well. Because when you're on that spiritual journey and in your baptism, and when you become a Jesus follower, that's your call. For some of you, it may be like my grandmother, Stuart, that you were born into a Christian household and you never knew a time in your life when you didn't know the love of Jesus. And folks, that's a wonderful call story. It sounds like what Jeremiah is saying, 
I knew from the moment I was born, I was loved by God and I was in God's service. Some of the rest of us may have grown up in religious households, but didn't know Jesus and had a time when we got called out from running in the other direction. Whatever your story is, that is your calling to be on this journey, to be a part of this journey of faith. And there are people who are going to ask you about it. Why do you follow Jesus? Why do you have faith? Why do you believe? You're going to get an opportunity to share your call starring far more than I'm going to get an opportunity to share my call story. Because people are going to see you. They're going to want what you have. Or they're going to question what you have. And the door is going to open for you to be able to share that story. And folks, Scripture tells us we need to be prepared to give an account of the hope that we have within us. Are you able and willing to share with somebody else why you follow Jesus? What difference it makes in your life? It doesn't have to be formal. It doesn't have to have a lot of scripture. It just has to be why you do what you do. But folks, I think the same is true for churches. I think all of us as churches have a calling just like I say to you, as long as we have breath, we have a calling from God to be followers of Jesus and to serve and to do. The same is true as long as we exist as a church, we have a calling. Something special that God has brought us together to do. This church has a, an amazing history there are groups and organizations all over this community who have DNA that started here because of callings that people in this church had to make a difference in the community and the body of Christ rallied around and did something amazing. The question becomes, what is our calling today? I have anointed you to be a prophet what is our prophetic message to our community? We as leadership in the church are asking those questions. But I'll tell you what happens every time I talk with someone. I get the answer that Jeremiah gave. Ah, God, truth. I don't know how to speak, for I am only a boy. The Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for I will send you, and you shall speak what I command you. Folks, I can't tell you the number of times I talk with some of you. In fact, one of my office staff had the same conversation with someone the other day. Many of you who are far far beyond anything I could hope or imagine to be in your spiritual journey. And yet when you get asked to do something, you go, but I don't know enough. I haven't studied enough. In fact, we end up calling Jeremiah the weeping prophet. Jeremiah always kind of whines and moans, and he's a little like us at times. I mean, I can tell you I was the same way. When God called and it was really clear that God was calling and other people were confirming the call, I'm going, uh-uh, not me. Remember, I'm going to be the athlete first. Remember, I'm the person who's good with numbers. I don't do words, God. You mean learn dead languages and write papers? Uh-uh. 
I can't do that. I had my own excuses for why I couldn't follow that call and go to seminary. And yet God said, I will speak for you. I will give you the words. You know, how many of us say we're not enough? You know, Paul had the same conversation with Timothy. If you want to read the letters in the New Testament, this is not an Old Testament prophet thing. This is a New Testament thing. This is a nowadays thing. When Paul said, Timothy, don't let them use your youth against you. You know that you learned at the feet of your mother and your grandmother. You know that God has called you. You've been with me. Now go. And God is calling us to do something special here in this community. And it's going to be hard and we're going to be scared. Because whenever we do what we're doing as a leadership team in creating a culture of renewal, when we start talking about a culture shift, it's, it's really hard. Jeremiah was being given a really hard word. He was the one who was going to tell them, you know they're coming. You know we're not going to make it. But I want you to hear this as well. Now that I have put my words into your mouth, see today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build up and to plant. Folks, there's always a word of hope in God's message. The hope that we get in Jesus, for those of us who are Christians, that even when it looks like doors are closing and it's not possible that God finds a way in our resurrection faith to open those doors and to create new ways. You know, one of the things that's going to be really hard for us is to learn new things. But there are many of you who are here who have the gifts and the talents that we need. You know how to follow something through. You know how to do those details. Some of us are good at getting things going, getting people excited, making the call. But we need the people who are the hands and the feet who make it happen. Because you see, we've gotten lazy. You know, it's real easy to give stuff away. We're going to do it on the 30th for everybody who comes. The, the carrot is that when you leave, we're going to send food with you. And, and you can go down to the bread shed and uh, on the third Saturday, we're just going to give you food. It's real easy to give stuff away. It's real easy to write checks. It's a whole lot harder to engage people to build up and to God is calling us to move away from our old habits that have destroyed and pulled down and to engage and to get involved with people and to find out what the real hurts and habits are and to help people to build up and to heal and to plant. But it's going to require us to hear that calling and to be willing to do something that is hard and uncomfortable. And many of us are going to say, God, I'm too young. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what the right words are. But hear the promise of God. I will put my words in your mouth and you will build and you will plant seeds of hope. Can we do that?
Thank you, Pastor. As you were sharing the message, I was reminded of a time I came to know the Lord when I was 14. And, <laughs> excuse me, I was in a junior high changing room because back then we had to wear uniforms for phys ed. Did you guys have to wear uniforms? And I had just come to know the Lord and I was just all like, you know, at 14 telling all this. And this girl was very quiet and she looked at me and she said, I don't believe there is a God. And no one had ever said that. And I'm, you know, I go, what? And she goes, I just, I, I don't think there is a God. And, you know, I can't tell you what I said, but I shared with her. I invited her to church with me. We became very good friends. And she came to know the Lord because God had put the words in my mouth to share with her. They were non-threatening. But just the innocence of a 14-year-old that's what we need. We need that innocence, not to be afraid that we'll offend. Just share in love. Just share what you know through your own experience. No, we're not perfect. But God loves us in spite of our imperfections. So just ask God to speak to you, give you the words, because there are people around you every day that need a word from you about God. Our final hymn is actually entitled, Lord, Speak to Me. It is hymn number 463, and we're doing uh, verses 1, 2, and 5. So please stand, Lord, Speak to Me. the good news today all of us are called God knows who you are and God has gifted you and loved you and brought you to this place but God also sends us out and through the power of the Holy Spirit that we may share that love and life with others listen to those little nudges take those moments and those opportunities to share love and life with others in Jesus name um.